You've probably heard many people say that the reason that we're going into the next bull market is because of the BlackRock ETF. It's because of the SEC losing their lawsuit to Binance. It's because of whatever catalytic event. Well, I'm here to tell you a very controversial take, and that is that I am essentially certain that those are not the reasons that Bitcoin is going to go into a bull market. And in today's episode, I am going to share with you exactly what will send us into a bull market and where those events fall into the picture. To start, I need to explain what drives Bitcoin bull markets in the first place. And there's really three major components. The first and most important is the actual use case of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is designed to be the first secure store of digital value. It is the first example of digital scarcity ever created in the history of mankind. It is instantaneous in its transactions. Of course, there's block time, but you can send the transaction more or less instantly. The transactions are extremely inexpensive, especially if you're talking about cross-border transactions that would normally be costing 10 to 15% of the total per, uh, price, uh, the total uh, transaction amount on a percentage basis. Instead, Bitcoin uses a very flat fee. And as I said, it is nearly unhackable. The first of the three things that sends Bitcoin into a bull market is the remembrance by the public of the value that Bitcoin has in the first place. The second thing that sends Bitcoin into a bull market is its technicals. And right now, the technicals for Bitcoin are lining up very solidly. Bitcoin has gone through about an 80 or so percent correction from 69,000 down to about 15,500. Bitcoin is moving into the halving season, and we're seeing that Bitcoin is on an upswing. Generally speaking, we've ra we've rallied from $15,500 all the way up to $31,500, and we have every reason to believe that that's going to continue based on things such as the weekly chart MACD, weekly chart RSI, weekly chart Lux Algo, three daily chart on all three of those. We're looking at a continuation pattern that's forming. We've seen a major uptrend in quarter one in the very beginning of quarter two this year, followed by sideways action. That's a bull flag, and that does point us even farther to the upside as well. There's all kinds of technical reasons why we believe that Bitcoin is going into a bull market. But the third reason that Bitcoin goes into bull markets is why I believe we're going into the next bull market. And it is far more significant than a Bitcoin ETF. And yes, you heard that right. Let me back up and explain why a Bitcoin ETF is significant. And then I'll explain why the fundamentals and the macroeconomic landscape are even more important than that. The reason that a Bitcoin ETF would be so vital is because the vast majority of investment in the United States that is done by the retail is done in the form of retirement accounts. So you're talking about Roth IRAs, you're talking about 401ks, you're talking about pensions, you're talking about people that are trying to secure their retirement. Especially when you start getting into your 30s and 40s, you end up investing hopefully 10 to 15, if not even more percent of your monthly take-home pay in some kind of tax-advantaged retirement account. Again, be that a 401k, a Roth IRA, a regular R, uh, IRA, a pension, whatever it may be. And when you make that investment, you have to invest in certain assets that are regulated by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission is the commission that is in charge of approving ETFs and other exchange-traded products. So if Bitcoin becomes an ETF as packaged by BlackRock, one of the largest ETF managers in the world, really the company that popularized ETF investing in the first place, then that opens up tens of trillions of dollars in investment globally into investing into the Bitcoin market directly on a spot basis that will lead to price appreciation because there is a direct impact on the supply and demand economics of Bitcoin. In short, a spot Bitcoin ETF opens up as much demand as you could possibly hope for. We're talking about 200 million American investors. Then from there, you just have to convince them to buy it. Many of them already are convinced to buy it, and they certainly will be if Bitcoin's already in a bull market. And then with the fact that a spot Bitcoin ETF allows for the supply side of things to um, be eaten up as far as uh, when you buy a spot Bitcoin ETF, there's actually custody taken. So that Bitcoin is actually taken out of circulation, driving the demand, uh, driving the price of Bitcoin higher. Again, said three times supply and demand economics you can see how that becomes a very potent weapon for a bull market. And you can also see where this narrative that we're only going into a, bear, a bull market, I said bear market, we're only going into a bull market because of a spot Bitcoin ETF. I'm here to tell you that that is not what will drive Bitcoin into a bull market, although I am very confident that that will be a catalytic event that may help drive the bull market. Now, we've talked about the three different main reasons why Bitcoin goes into a bull market. I really want to harp on that last one for a moment, that being the fundamentals, not just of Bitcoin, but of the global economy. There's two major factors that I believe are going to lead to the next Bitcoin bull market, and those would be geopolitics and macroeconomic data. Over the last three years, there has been a certain 
cycle, a, a certain uh, history to how the Fed has been manipulating the United States dollar. Originally, right after the pandemic and the government decided to shut everything down, the Fed jumped into high gear, realizing that we were about to go through massive inflation and massive unemployment all at the same time. The Federal Reserve has a dual mandate of maintaining price stability and low unemployment. Their goal is to maintain low inflation or at least inflation that is steady and consistent and constant for the sake of stability and low unemployment. When you shut down the economy, you naturally are going to drive inflation because there's not as many people to work on the goods and services that you need to run an economy. So the inflation is going to get out of control very quickly. And of course, the unemployment is going to go up when you tell people that they can't go to the office. So the Fed was in a very tight spot in 2020. And they decided to go all in on stimulating the economy. It's very similar to what we did in 08, but about four times larger. They, in, they injected about four to five trillion dollars into the economy through the through uh, quantitative easing, that being the purchasing of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. And they also slammed the interest rates straight down to the floor, down to zero percent. When they did that, they stimulated a huge amount of investment in the economy, even though the economy was in very dire straits. And that led to short-term economic stability, but it led to long-term de um, decimation of the value of the United States dollar. We're still seeing that happen today. So the first epoch post-pandemic was high quantitative easing, massive amounts of liquidity being injected into the economy, interest rates being slammed to the floor. Around February of 2022, that being last year, it became apparent that the Russians were going to invade Ukraine, and that was going to lead to massive economic instability the world over. And we've now entered into this era of the least geopolitical stability that we've seen since the end of the of the cold war and with that the fed was also realizing that inflation was starting to get, to get out of control so they stopped the quantitative easing they began quantitative tightening and rolling off the treasuries and mortgage-backed securities pulling liquidity out of the united states economy making money harder to come by making investment in risk on assets such as bitcoin more uh maybe i should say less appealing to the average investor at the same time they began hiking interest rates the first epoch Quantitative easing, low interest rates is very conducive to the expansion of business. We also saw that there was a crisis going on at the time having to do with the pandemic, which led many people to be afraid of our institutions and move towards something non-institutional like Bitcoin that they believe could help them store value. At the same time, here in February of 2022, there was a crisis, the war in Ukraine, and that led to many people moving in more of sort of a nationalistic sense. They wanted to invest in the United States dollar. So two crises, two crises. Two completely different responses. The first crisis went right along with the QE and the low interest rates of investment on risk on assets. That's when you saw Bitcoin rally to sixty-five thousand dollars and it rallied there very quickly. It probably would have only gone to fifty if not for the pandemic and for the actions of the Fed. In February of 2022, when the war in Ukraine started, and that scared people away from risk on assets because they wanted to be more conservative, they wanted to be more back at home, they wanted to be more nationalistic, they wanted to onshore things, they wanted to use their own national currencies. And you saw the quantitative tightening and the hiking interest rates. That led to people pulling out of Bitcoin, and you saw Bitcoin crash very quickly. And it also, both of those events happened to line up with the four-year halving cycle. Bull market during uh, the pandemic, bear market during that quantitative easing cycle. Quantitative tightening cycles, excuse me. Now we're moving into the third epoch. And this third epoch is different than both because it's right in the middle. We're moving into a season where the Fed is going to stop the quantitative tightening. They're going to likely pause the balance sheet maybe in six to 12 months. They'll probably roll off another 500 to $750 billion worth of assets. But at some point, they're going to stop doing that. And they're also going to begin... Uh, pausing interest rates. We pretty much know at this point that the Fed will hike interest rates one more time and then probably pause. Fed, November 1st is coming quickly, and when that meeting happens, we'll probably see a pause. And if we see a pause here, and the QT starts to slow down at some point in the next 6 to 12 months, then we're entering into a 30 epoch where the war in Ukraine is still going on, but it's not front line, It's not headline news anymore. It's not impacting the sentiment as much as it was. It's not scaring people as much as it was. Unfortunately, and this is not something that we're you know too excited about, but it's kind of become one of those things that's like normal. That's sad, but it's true. And so this 30 epoch is not like either of the two previous. This 30 epoch is one that is more neutral and neutral is more bullish than bearish, which is what we're coming out of right now. This is also moving into the halving season, which historically has not been bearish, but it hasn't been ridiculously bullish. Normally, the massive rally that accompanies a bull market starts about six months post halving. This season, the next six months up to the halving, and then about three to four months after that is normally a slightly bullish, but only slightly bullish season historically. And that lines up once again with the actions of the Fed and the actions of the geopolitics. 
We are not going into a bull market because of the halving, although the halving has a lot to do with it. We're not going into a bull market because a Bitcoin ETF may be coming. First of all, we don't know when that's going to happen or if it's going to take until the election comes and Gary Gensler gets ousted and hopefully replaced by uh, Heather. Uh, sorry, not Heather. Hester Pierce. Um, it's very possible that we'll see a Bitcoin ETF at that point. I wouldn't bank on any Bitcoin ETFs being approved during the reign of Gary the Snake. I'm sorry, Gary Gensler. Maybe I should say Gary the Snake. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what I do believe is going to lead to this next bull market is the change in um, policy from the Fed leading to flatline interest rates, eventually dropping interest rates probably in about 12 months, quantitative tightening slowing down, which means that the decrease in the liquidity of the economy will slow down, which will lead to people being more interested in investing on risk on assets. And at the same time, all of this makes sense from a job standpoint because the jobs data is looking bullish and the Federal Reserve has noticed that they've managed to keep the jobs numbers under control. Remember the dual mandate, they're trying to keep unemployment low while also keeping inflation and pri uh, inflation low, price stability high. But the jobs data is starting to look a little concerning. There, there are a lot of jobs being added, but there's also some other numbers that are um, somewhat concerning that something may be brewing there from a, from a jobs standpoint. The Fed's probably going to pause at some point soon. And when they do that, I think that's going to lead to increased interest in the United in the um, in the Bitcoin market, and at the same time, to address the Dixie and the stock market, I think the stock market is going to bottom out and bounce soon, which will be very bullish for Bitcoin. I think the next six to twelve months, the stock market will be back at all time high. That'll drive Bitcoin to the upside. Dixie will probably stop rallying at some point in the next six to twelve months and go through a major correction, as a result of many of the factors I've already talked about. I'll tie those together in another video if you if you'd be interested. All of these factors, just recap, all of these factors potential of Bitcoin ETF, stock market probably going into a rally, Dixie probably dropping in the next six months, the technical analysis, the having, the war in Ukraine moving into back of the newspaper news, um, the uh, effective federal funds rate pausing and potentially even dropping, and the quantitative tightening slowing down, all of those factors come together to give us a picture of why the next bull market is coming and why that bull market will probably lead us to all-time high in the next 12 to 18 months. At least I would predict by the end of 2024 to the first quarter of 2025. I don't think we're going to all-time high this year. I would be very confident in saying we're not, but that probably will be coming sooner than you expect. And if you are an investor who's interested in making money in the cryptocurrency space, just a couple of words of wisdom. First and foremost, ensure that you're investing in your education. If you, haven't seen, if you want to learn more about that, watch yesterday's video. Ensure that you're investing in your education. You can do that for free by investing your time and looking things up. You can also do that with buying educational products, and those are definitely worth your time if you're trying to do this professionally. And also make sure that you have your personal finances set up in such a way that you have a line item for how much money you're going to put into investments every single month. Once you have that line item, you can decide how much of that's going to go into a Roth IRA, investing in the stock market, if that's what you choose to do, how much of that's going to go into paying off high interest consumer debt, such as credit card debt, IRS debt, whatever it may be, and how much of that is going to go into investing into your Bitcoin and your cryptocurrency portfolio. Dollar cost averaging into the stock market and into Bitcoin is the lowest risk, highest reward way to get wealthy that has ever been conceived in the history of mankind. And I would highly encourage you to embark on that journey and then give it time. Give it five, 10 years, and you will make a considerable amount of money. And somebody asked about crypto IRAs yesterday in the comments, so I'll go ahead and address that. If you are looking into getting into a crypto IRA, just understand that there are withdrawal penalties if you're trying to withdraw before the age of 60, 59 and a half. I'm way too young to be worried about that number, but there are with, there are penalties if you withdraw early. So if you're over the age of probably 50, let's say, yeah, go for a crypto IRA. If not, you might want to consider sticking to what would be considered like a brokerage account in crypto. That's not what it's called, but like, you know, just regular investing in the cryptocurrency market. Nothing wrong with throwing some money into a crypto IRA. Um, and I, I would recommend it to a certain degree. But what I'm, I think what I'm saying is that if you're much older and you're closer to retirement, since crypto moves so quickly, I think that's where, um, if you're much older than that's, uh, not much older, but if you're much closer to your retirement age, that's where a Roth IRA or a crypto IRA may be of more use. So is the BlackRock ETF going to launch the next bull market? It could be part of the it could be part of the story, but it's not all the story. That story is still being written. And if you'd like to read that story with me, then make sure to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and stay tuned because more content is coming. Peace.